Is Fjallraven's G1000 fabric with Greenland wax really that water resistant? The short answer is no, they're really not. And they're certainly not worth paying a premium for. If you're looking for water resistance, there are much better alternatives out there that are both cheaper and outperform G1000 coated with Greenland wax. The long answer is, well, the rest of this video. First and foremost, G1000 fabric is not water resistant on its own. The individual product pages don't make this distinction clear, but Fjall Raven's material page on G1000 is a little bit more accurate where it says, by adding Greenland wax, they become water resistant too. So G1000 on its own, not water resistant. With Greenland wax, supposedly water resistant. To test this, I set up a comparison between four different pairs of pants. For a control, I used a pair of cotton jeans which I knew will absorb any moisture immediately. We then have untreated G1000 fabric, which, if you don't know, is just a 65% polyester, 35% cotton blend. Then we have G1000 with a fresh coat of Greenland wax. And for a comparison, I have a pair of cool Renegade hiking pants and Eidogear combat pants which I use for Airsoft. The Renegades are a 95% nylon, 5% spandex, and have Cool's in-house water repellent called Duralux. The combat pants are 50% cotton, 50% polyester, and say they have a Teflon coating for water resistance. Side note, if you don't already know, Gore-Tex is basically just stretched out Teflon and their patent expired in 1997, which then allowed companies to make their own water repellents out of stretched out Teflon and call it whatever they want, but it's all pretty much the same thing. There are plenty of other YouTube videos already covering this topic. For my test, it's very important to note that the hiking pants and combat pants have been washed and worn countless times, with no reapplication of water resistance whatsoever. Greenland wax, on the other hand, can sorta of maybe survive a single cold wash, but it'll be washed out completely on one warm cycle, so keep that in mind. I first sprayed everything down with an even heavy mist. As expected, the jeans soaked it all up and instantly became damp. The water stood on the untreated G1000 fabric, only for it to soak in within about a minute. They really need to put a big asterisk here, water resistant only when treated with Greenland wax. And how did the wax treated side do? Pretty decent against the mist, for a few minutes. Left completely on its own, the wax treated G1000 mostly holds it off for a while, but then it starts to wet out after around 15 to 20 minutes of exposure. The treated nylon, on the other hand, kept the water beaded up completely the entire time. It never started to soak in. The combat pants performed equally well, keeping all of the water on top of the fabric as opposed to letting it soak into the fabric. And remember, these pants are even more cotton heavy than the Fjallravens. Next, I tried spraying a good amount of water on each fabric so that a bit would pool up on top of it. The jeans, of course, just sponged it all up, and the untreated G1000 weren't too far behind. The waxed G1000 tried its best to resist, but was completely wetted out within a few minutes. The combat pants performed significantly better, and although they appeared to start soaking more water in after a few minutes, a lot was still held on the outside of the fabric. I could just barely start to feel a slight amount of wetness on the inside and most of the water was still rolling off the pants. Similarly, the cools, while looking wet, performed even better in that I still couldn't feel any wetness against my skin on the inside. And this is kind of crazy, especially considering that these are the thinnest fabric by far. I also did a brush test where I'd try to brush off beaded up water. With the G1000s, it actually pushes a significant amount of water into the fabric, whether treated or untreated. On the other hand, trying to brush water off the nylon and combat pants, the water would just smear around the surface, but it wouldn't get pushed into the fabric. I still wasn't able to feel anything on the inside, whereas I'd definitely start to feel wetness soaked into the Fjallravens. So, all in all, I personally would not call the Fjallraven G1000 fabric and Greenland wax combo to be very water resistant. Sure, we can get into a pedantic argument of what really is water resistance and how similar is it or different is it to water proofness 
And how much water does something need to hold off in order to be put in either category? But that's why I made this video, so you could decide for yourself. As for me, I'm going to keep it simple and say no, they're not very water resistant, especially when completely outperformed by much cheaper products. Sure, will G1000 fabric with Greenland wax hold off a bit of mist for a couple of minutes of light rain? Yeah, but it doesn't take much more than that for this fabric to wet out. And being 35% cotton, it takes a very long time to dry in comparison to the nylon pants. The part that especially kills it for me is how fragile the Greenland wax treatment is. If you want to keep them waxed, you should not wash them, period. And whenever you do reapply wax, it can easily take 30 minutes per garment. When compared to other products at a fraction of the price and none of the high maintenance upkeep, it's a pretty clear winner. Don't buy G1000 fabric and Greenland wax for water resistance. It seems like basically anything else will do the job better. And don't get me wrong, I love my Fjallraven gear. It's fashionable, ergonomic, and very durable, but this is absolutely not the fabric and treatment combo for water resistance, especially not for the price tag.